Kia ora, I'm the Kiwi Coder, and this is episode 9 of AI. In this episode, we're going to be building a targeting system for the agents, uh, like you can see here. So each of these agents is basically given a score, and the agent that, or the target that has got the highest score will be selected as the best target. So that is denoted by the yellow circle. So if I move this agent around inside the, the sensors field of view, you can see the, um, the color of the circle basically fades out and that's because it's getting a lower score. Um, but if I move it like more in line and closer to this target, it suddenly becomes the, fa uh, <laughs> the famous, the, the, the best target uh, to, to focus on. And this is the one the agent will try to attack. Um, so if I move it back outside, uh, then it, it goes back to red and now uh, this one will become the favorite target. So you may be wondering like why is this one being picked and not this one here? And there's actually several things that factor into the target uh, selection. That is the distance to the agent, uh, the angle uh, to the agent, and also the age. So basically the last time the target was seen, how, how recently it was seen. And uh, we can adjust the weights of, of each of these uh, these properties here. So um, this, this is the distance. Uh, so if I increase the distance here, then targets that are closer, uh, like this one here, suddenly become uh, more, more valued. So this can totally depend on your game and you can adjust these weightings sort of how you see fit. The final thing to note is the player is also considered a target. So the agent, uh, it just attacks targets and it doesn't really know if it's attacking the player or the eight or another agent or, or whoever. So just uh, testing this out in the scene, we can see that the agent now attacks all targets in view and uh, basically, yeah, when, when it's finished attacking, then it goes to try to find more targets and uh, th there's none left at the moment, but uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Cool, let's get into it. Massive thank you to all the Patreon supporters this month. You guys are totally awesome. If you are interested in the project files associated with these videos, then please check out the link in the description below. So before we get started, I just wanted to give a quick recap of where we got to in the previous episode and what we're going to cover in this one. So currently we have an agent and it has a sensor attached to it and the sensor basically collects objects that are in the world and uh, makes, them, makes the agent aware of them. So we're going to create a new class called the AI Sensory Memory class and what this class does is basically remembers all of the objects that have entered the sensor's field of view. This is so when objects uh, leave the sensors field of view, the agent still has access to those objects and, and basically remembers them. The second class we're gonna create is called AI Targeting System. And what this class does is basically evaluates each of the memories uh, we have in our sensory memory class stored and then selects one as being the best, uh, the best target so this, uh, this best memory or best target is stored in the targeting system. And this is the final target that is provided to the state machine, which the agent will use to attack. So as objects move around the world, these memories will constantly be updated and the targeting system will reevaluate the memories, basically decide which is the best object to target. Also, as objects leave the sensors field of view, there will be some time delay and after a certain period of time, the, the memories will be forgotten. Cool. First thing to do is just add the characters layer to the sensor filter. This is just so the character appears in the sensors field of view. Next, we need to create two scripts, one called AI Sensory Memory, and this will hold our list of memories, and the second script called the AI Targeting System. This is gonna select the best memory from our list of memories. You can go ahead and add the AI targeting system as a component to the agent now, but the AI sensory memory class is just gonna be a regular class, so just get rid of that boilerplate there. And we're gonna need a second class. This is uh, just kind of like a storage class. So it's just gonna to bundle together a bunch of sort of related properties about an individual object uh, sort of in inside the sensors view. So the properties that we're gonna store are the game object itself, the position of the game object, the uh, direction to the game object from the agent, the distance, the angle, last time it was seen, and a score, which I'll cover a little bit later. We're gonna store a list of memories on the sensory memory class. Um, so you can just create like a new list, uh, like a public one like this. And I'm gonna need a, an array of game objects. This is really just like a storage buffer uh, to store the result from the sensor query. 
So um, for the constructor, I'm just passing in the max players here and then using that to initialize the characters array. Now I'm just creating a new function called fetch memory. And this just takes a game object as a parameter uh, to basically use for the query. So first we just uh, basically look through the list of memories, uh, just using this Lambda function here, just comparing the game object on the memory with the one that was passed in. If a memory was found, then, or oh, sorry, if no memory was found, then we create a new memory, add it to the list. Otherwise we just uh, return the one that we found. The next function to create is refresh memory. And this takes two parameters, the agent and the target. And uh, basically it's just gonna call fetch memory just to kind of ensure we have a memory for the target. And now uh, just kind of fill out all of the parameters I mentioned above. So the game object, the position, which is just gonna be the target position, the direction, which is gonna be relative to the agent that was passed in as a parameter. Uh, the distance, which we can just calculate by taking the magnitude of the direction. The angle, which uh, we just calculate by measuring the angle between the forward axis of the agent and the direction to the target. And the last seen time is just going to be a timestamp using uh, time.time. .time. And we'll use this to actually figure out the age of a memory a little bit later. Cool. So the next function is called update sensors and this takes a sensor as a parameter. This basically does the bulk of the work. It uh, basically does a filter query using the character layer on the sensor and then loops over all of the targets that was uh, basically found with that query. And then it just uh, gets the target out of the characters buffer or the characters array. And then it just calls refresh memory, passing in the agent, which we can get via sensor.gameObject and the target object. Cool, so that's pretty much it for this script for now. Um, so now we just need to integrate it into the targeting system component. So I'm just gonna create a new instance of the sensory memory class, passing in 10 as the max memory value. And I need to get a reference to the sensor object just inside start by calling get component. And now inside the update function, we can just call that function that we made before on the memory class called update sensors, passing in the sensor. And now to debug this, I'm gonna add a on draw gizmos function. Um, and here we just loop over the memories inside the memory class. I'm just gonna use the color red to draw a sphere at each of the memory positions. So here I'm just calling, yeah, gizmos dot draw sphere passing in the memory's position and 0 0.2 for the uh, for the radius. So testing this out in the editor. Um, okay, it's not working. Uh, yeah, I need to add execute in edit mode uh, just to make that script run inside the editor. Cool, so now we can see the position of the player uh, represented as a memory inside the targeting system. So the next thing to do is really just forget about objects that have left the agent's sensors field of view after a certain period of time. So to do this, I'm gonna create a new function called uh, forget memories. And this is gonna remove all memories that are older than a certain time, specified as a float parameter here called older than. So to calculate the age of a memory, uh, we can use the last seen uh, parameter here, which was set as the timestamp of the last time it was seen. So I can just subtract the current time from the last time it was seen. And this effectively gives me how many seconds ago the target was, uh, was seen. So using this, uh, we can call memories.removeAll. Just inside this Lambda, uh, all we need to do is just check if the age is greater than the value passed in then it will be removed from, from that list. So finally, we just need to specify uh, what the memory span is. And this is uh, three seconds I've specified here. And we can just uh, pass the memory span into the forget memories function. So testing this out in the editor now, if I move the agent around and move the character outside of the view, uh, we can now see the memory basically disappears after three seconds. Um, I've just got to keep wiggling it there because that forces the editor to update. 
So this section is going to be based on evaluating scores for the memories uh, because ultimately we need to pick one in the end uh, to use as our target. So I'm going to create a new function here called calculate score which takes a memory as an argument and I'm just going to calculate the distance to that to that memory uh, and divide it by the sensor distance. This basically gives us rough kind of zero to one range um, for, for the distance score and I'm just going to return this value here as the distance score. So now I need to evaluate each, uh, basically calculate a score for each of the memories. So just creating a new function here called evaluate scores, looping over each of the memories and then just setting the memory score to the result of the calculate score function. And finally, we just need to um, call evaluate scores in the update loop. The last thing to do is just try to visualize the scores. So I'm just going to set the alpha value here uh, directly to the memory score. And now we can see when the agent is brought closer to the player, the, uh, the score value basically fades out. Um, we actually want this the other way around. Uh, so when the agent uh, is close to the target, the score value is high. And when it is far away, it's low. So yeah, that looks better now. So we're going to be using this function quite a lot, uh, so I'm just going to create a, a helper function called normalize, which just takes a value, and a max value, just basically normalizes it to a 0 to 1 range and then inverts it. So just replacing this with the, uh, the exact same code, normalize. And now I'm actually going to create a weight, which we can basically weight all of the individual sort of scores that we calculate here. Okay, so now um, I'm just going to test this out in the editor with multiple players. So we can we can now see that each of the players has got a slightly different score depending how far away it is from the agent. But the uh, the players on the outside have got a higher score than the one in the middle. Um, so we're going to fix that up in a bit. But first, I'm just going to fix up the uh, the rendering of these spheres uh, because the alpha value it's kind of arbitrary. The score value isn't necessarily between zero and one. So what I'm doing here is basically taking the individual score and uh, for a memory and then dividing that by the maximum score out of all of the memories. And that way it'll just give us, uh, it'll, it'll be a bit easier to kind of visualize having those alpha values in the zero to one range. Cool, yeah. So now it's like fully opaque when, um, when an object has the maximum score. So now to factor in the angle to the targets, we do it in much the same way. Uh, that we did the distance, uh, just calculate a score based on the angle and the sensor's angle and then uh, just uh, mul multiply that by like an angle weight. And now we just sum each of the individual scores together and return that for as the total score. So yeah, now we can see the, uh, the player in the middle there has got a higher score than the, the two on the outside except when I bring one of the players on the outside closer, uh, their, their scores go up and you can you can kind of play around with the effects. You see that one has got probably the same angle score but a higher distance score. Um, and there is some middle ground here and this is where the weights come into it. So if you bump up the angle weight, it means um, yeah, targets that are directly in front will have a much higher weighting. You can also set the weights to zero um, just to completely disable that field if you prefer. The next thing to add is also the time um, when the last target was seen. We can factor that into the scoring as well. You can factor pretty much whatever you want in here. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to calculate an age score. So taking the memory's age and then dividing that basically by the memory span. And again, just multiplying it by like an age weight. Um, just lets us factor in sort of how long ago the target was seen and how sort of uh, how relevant it becomes as a target. So now if I drag the agent around, you can kind of see the, um, the, the weights sort of like fading out for the objects that are outside of the field of view. So the individual memories have basically been assigned a score now and we can visualize them here. And uh, the next step is basically picking the, uh, the memory that has the highest score and this is going to be used as the target. 
So inside the evaluate scores function, um, we just want to basically keep track of uh, the best memory. So I'm going to create a new property called uh, best memory. And inside this loop, it's, it's pretty simple. All we do is just check. Uh, we also need to check if we don't have memory, then we just pick one. Um, and otherwise we pick uh, the memory that has the highest score just by checking if the, the current memory score is greater than our best memory score. And next I'm just gonna check if the memory is the best memory here, then I'm just gonna render it a different color just to make it a little bit more obvious which memory is the best. Cool, so now we can see the yellow object here is uh, currently represents the best target the agent is sort of considering based on the, the scores that we evaluated. So now I'm just going to create a ton of public properties, um, kind of just to bypass the the pet the best memory object and just make it a little bit easier for outside systems to kind of get access to the specific properties of the current target. So yeah, like the has target just returns uh, like true basically if there is a best memory. Um, the target property is just going to return the game object of the best memory. Uh, the target position just returns the, um, the position of the memory. Uh, we're going to have target in sight. Um, so this one, I'm actually going to do something slightly different and just check if the age is like less than 0.5 seconds. And that basically just means that we've seen it recently. Um, and this will be used like to determine if the agent should shoot at the target or not. Um, the target distance, uh, again, yeah, here, just return the distance to the target and that's pretty much it at this point. So the next thing to fix up is basically when I delete these characters, you can see a memory is sort of still hanging around here. And uh, the reason for that is basically it's, it's not getting removed because the age isn't being updated. Um, but we can basically just add multiple kind of conditions here about when memories should be deleted. So this one here is just going to remove all game objects that are basically now null, uh, which is the case when you delete something. And I'm going to add a third condition here as well, uh, which just checks if the, the health uh, component says the agent is dead or not. Um, just so we don't try to like shoot at dead targets, which is uh, quite important. <laughs> So this last stage is pretty much just gluing everything together. So just to recap, the agent is currently going to find a weapon and then moves directly to the attack player state, which is pretty much cheating because it knows exactly where the player is. So instead, I'm going to create a new state called AI find target state. And what this is basically going to do is just roam around the level until it finds the target using the targeting system. So yeah, again, it's gonna inherit from the AI state class. So we just need to implement that interface and return um, a new enum, which I'll just define now called find target inside the, the get ID function. And just getting rid of the default implementations there. So the, um, the agent state, we just need to register the AI find target state. And just while I'm here, I'm also gonna add uh, just access to the AI targeting system just pretty similar to how we've done all of the other subsystems so far. So now opening up the find weapon state, um, we can see that it moves directly to the attack player state when there is one weapon. So I'm now gonna change this to move to the find target state and also just copy this uh, small piece of wander code. Uh, so now the find target state is basically just gonna yeah, roam around the world and when it has a target, um, then it's gonna switch into the attack player state. And now I'm going to rename this to attack target state, just cause it, it's gonna be a little bit more generic than it was. And rename this class to AI attack target state. And now the job of this state is uh, basically replacing all of these um, player transforms with um, just the target that is coming from the targeting system instead. So here uh, we just use AI targeting .target .transform. And because the target can actually change during the update, uh, I just need to move this into the update loop here. So the nav mesh agent destination just gets assigned from the, uh, the target position from the targeting system. If I can spell it <laughs> and just yeah moving this uh, this chunk of code here to the top and I'm just going to kind of rearrange the way this is working 
So instead of checking if the player is dead and moving to idle, I'm just going to check if we don't have a target, then just move to the find target state. And that just puts the agent into this nice sort of uh, endless loop, basically. So inside the update firing function, we no longer have to go directly through the sensor. We can just use the target in sight property. And inside choose weapon, we can just use the target distance property from the targeting system. Now a couple of small bug fixes, um, the target position which I wrote before uh, is kind of incorrect because the um, the target position only gets updated for objects inside the sensor so it's more like a last known position so I'm just going to change this to gameobject.transform.position and also inside the evaluate scores function we just need to set the best memory to null uh, this is just to ensure the best memory gets cleared out if if there are like if there's nothing in the sensor we don't want to hold on to the best memory cool so now testing this out with uh, some AI agents we can now see the um, the AI actually kind of recognizes uh, other AI characters now which is pretty cool uh, before it only knew about the player so now it actually knows about other other agents and is able to kind of attack <laughs> Amazing. Okay, I'm going to do a proper test now. So I did notice a couple of bugs there. Um, inside the find target state, um, sorry, not the find target state, the attack target state, uh, we're currently activating the weapon when we enter the state. So when we leave the state, um, that basically means we don't have a target. So I'm going to uh, basically just deactivate the weapon and uh, that, that just means the agent will basically put the weapon away uh, once it loses its target, which can be for multiple reasons, one of which is the target is dead. So the other thing that we're doing <coughs> is inside the enter state for the attack target state, the inter, inside the enter function, sorry, I can't, uh, can't think. We're basically setting the nav mesh agent speed equals to the attack speed here. So um, inside the find target state, uh, I kind of want to do a similar thing, but use a different speed. So the I'm going to create a new property here on the config called uh, find target speed. And then I'm going to use this inside the find target state. And what this basically means is the find target speed is less than, oh, sorry, no. Find target speed is more than the attack speed. So this causes the agent to basically walk when it is attacking a target and then start to run. Uh, when it's trying to find a target and this just gives an opportunity for the AI to um, or the player to basically escape an agent that is attacking which uh, just adds like a little bit more variance to the gameplay and makes it a little bit more interesting so the final thing to do is just like a quick test and I've just dragged the game window down here um, just to because <clears throat> I'm going to watch everything in the scene view and basically what's happening here is the agent is um, it's it knows about uh, these two these two characters here but the first thing it's going to do is go and try to find the weapon and then it will still have a memory of these two agents uh, so it will immediately go and try to seek one of them out as soon as it has a weapon so let's just test this out now so we can see the agent finds the weapon and then immediately goes to start trying to trying to find uh, an agent here which is pretty cool um, but if I were to then move these two agents outside of um, uh, and then just I'll just wiggle this around so it forgets about those those two targets uh, now when the agent finds a weapon it, act, it uh, doesn't activate the weapon just yet until it finds its first target which is the player in this case and yeah so now it doesn't know about any target so it's trying to look for one Okay, this guy's just seen a weapon. Oh, it should should find one here. Nice. And that's it for this video, guys. If you made it to the end, then really appreciate you watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Stay tuned. Kakite.